by Sunshine Rwanda, it's Wednesday the 19th of July. Coming on up on today's Rise and Shine Rwanda. The presidential election campaigns are underway and we covered all the action. The Ubuntu Arts Festival returned with its third edition during the weekend. Good morning, Rwanda. You are watching Rise and Shine Rwanda with me, Stefan Nguabuji. And me, Fidelis Karangwa. Over the next half an hour, we'll bring you the latest headlines in the news business and lifestyle but first let's get straight into our new fe news features The government of Rwanda and the World Bank have signed a $120 million financial agreement to support skills development across different sectors of the economy. Finance and Economic Planning Minister Claver Gatete said the 38-year concession alone will mainly focus on priority sectors including manufacturing, energy, transport and logistics among other sectors. He added that this loan is affordable and will help sponsor programs that will ensure provision of quality skills that are market relevant for sustained employability. Rwanda will starting today for the inaugural Continental Youth Connect Africa Summit that is expected to draw more than 2,500 delegates from across the continent to discuss the future of Africa's youth. This will be the first edition of the Youth Connect initiative and it is set to bring together different youths to showcase the potential of Africa's youth and their available opportunities. It was first launched in Rwanda in 2012 by the government of Rwanda in collaboration with One UN Rwanda and has since given a platform to young people to participate in leadership and business related conversations which are important in changing and shaping their mindset. And in regional news, Kenya has developed a national security plan to ensure that the August presidential polls are peaceful. The acting cabinet secretary in the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of the national government, Fred Matiangi, said that the security plan maps the entire country to include a risk assessment of the potential areas where violence could occur. The security plan will be cascaded to all the 47 counties to facilitate the electoral body to conduct peaceful and fair elections. He also promised to ensure that the law is followed without fear or favor. He added, the government officially also cautioned Kenyans against the use of social media platforms to spread hate speech. Now let's get back to the local news. Today marks the sixth day since the presidential elections campaigns kicked off on Friday the 14th of July 2017 and the excitement has been immense. With three candidates officially approved to run, Mr. Paul Kagame representing the Rwanda Patriotic Front, Dr. Frank Habineza representing the Democratic Green Party, and Philippe Maimana who's running as an independent candidate, we attended the Ruhango campaign to give you an insight on what a day in the campaigns is like. Take a look. Tens of thousands of people were up bright and early to attend President Polka Gamia's election campaign in Ruhango town, where they expressed nothing but joy and excitement for this candidate. In his speech, Kagame emphasized the importance of freedom of expression for all and the fact that Rwandans should not feel threatened by external pressure that says that they're living under a dictatorship government since they themselves voted for the referendum. Ya 
In words of praise from the Ruhango locals, they express gratitude for some of the things that President Kagame has helped them to achieve. <laughs> Telefon <laughs> All right, what could you tell me about the general turnout of actually all these campaigns going on? So first of all, all these campaigns are being documented on TV literally all social media and i don't know if you've seen some of the pictures you've watched some of the videos the people are coming in large crowds it has been reported thousands and thousands over 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 uh, 150,000 people are coming for these campaigns especially for the ones organized by fpr mm -hmm. so you can see that large well, large crowds are attending these campaigns they see the importance of being part of these campaigns they need to know what the um, candidates have in store for them. They need to be convinced that these candidates are worth their vote. Mm -hmm. So you can see that they're actually participating in, in these campaigns. And um, uh, if we talk about the other candidates as well, uh, they've also put a major effort in making sure that people actually understand what their campaigns are about. And um, they've go, uh, they're also going to the same districts that uh, Mr. Bokdam has been going to. Uh, the numbers are not as big as the ones with FPR, but but still you can see that you know, they're being given the same um, value wherever they go as Mr. Paul Kagame did. And you know, I, you can I can genuinely say that the Rwandans see the importance and re the importance of being part of these campaigns and respect the fact that they have to be there. Interesting to know. But if I may ask, what do you think? How? Could you what, okay? What could you tell us about the candidates' behaviors since the campaign has started? I can say I don't know. I don't. In my mm -hmm. opinion, I feel like the larger the crowd, you know, the more confident you become. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Paul Kagame is known to be one very opinionated, <laughs> one very passionate person about what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So you can even hear it in his campaigns, in what he's saying, what he's, you know, telling the people about what he intends to do. Uh, for one of the next seven years he he's standing strong on his beliefs and people like that about mm -hmm. him um, when it comes to mr. Philip he has also made large promises when it comes to what he wants to do if he's voted uh, 
as much as saying, you know, whatever the Jinga program has not done, he's ready to do. So you might be the next mm -hmm. person to get a cow very soon. He's that dedicated to ensure that every family mm -hmm. gets the gets a cow to the Jinga program. Uh, Mr. Frank as well has been doing a great job. I, and there's only been one incident so mm -hmm. far since the campaign started mm -hmm. uh, where they reported um, a malpractice, if I may call it that, uh, where Mr. Frank uh, was warned not to hold his campaigns mm -hmm. in schools mm -hmm. or in marketplaces because mm -hmm. They don't. They don't want the campaigns to affect the, the daily, you know, routines of people. If people have to go to the market to sell their commodities, they don't want that. Just because a campaign is there, a campaign is being held there, mm -hmm. it will stop their business. So mm -hmm. that's the only uh, thing that the NEC is trying to avoid. So mm -hmm. they've warned him not to do his campaigns in schools mm -hmm. and in marketplaces, but everywhere else so far, according to the guidelines, he's allowed to do. And I, I think all of them are very enthusiastic. They feel positive about what they're bringing forth to, to mm -hmm. the people. And now it's just a matter of time, really, until 4th of August, and mm -hmm. we actually see who was more convincing than the right. others. Yeah. Now, Fidelis, if I may, I know this question is on everybody's lips. Yeah. External medias have been talking about a climate of so-called fear as we approach the elections yes. and tying the knot. Yes. What could you tell us about such remarks? Or I think the best answer to that um, is what Mr. Kagame himself said about uh, these elections. If Let's just go right straight to the small, tiny facts that are so obvious to everybody. If people are so afraid of the elections, then why are they participating in these campaigns in large numbers as they are? Someone would say, you know, they're being forced into it, right? But then he went back and said, so if you guys are being forced into, you know, being part of these campaigns and electing uh, a certain person as president, then why did they the, why did the people themselves vote for the referendum? So he basically encouraged people not to listen to external media. Um, this always happens and doesn't just happen for Rwanda, it happens for all the countries. Uh, whenever there's an election coming up, you know, media tries to get a bit crazy about it and tries to set up stories that are not necessarily there. So it's a matter of us as Rwandans to stand strong on our beliefs and say, you know, we appreciate your concern, but we are comfortable with the way things are. We're not being forced into anything. Um, he said that we should exercise our freedom of speech and let them know that we are none of us is under threat about what's going on in the election. So we really should do our part as well and, and stand up for our country and stand up for um, what we see is going on to let everyone know that we are happy and comfortable and proud of what Rwanda is doing and what Rwanda is going to do in the future. All right, Fidelis, thank you very much for our very first story of the day. We'll be back with more. Welcome back to Rise and Shine Rwanda. Let's get straight into lifestyle. Our main man, Stefan. <laughs> I understand you had a fun weekend this weekend. What were you up to? I would say a wonderful weekend. Yes. As for the ones who don't know, the Umumun Art Festival came back with its third edition yeah. during the 14th and 16th. And as you know, Umumun to started in 2015, so this is actually their third edition. Mm -hmm. And on this edition, they were trying to show how to incorporate art and technology for the sake of humanity. I, I didn't attend. I'm very jealous, but I know you have my back. So yes. let's see. Let's see what you have for us. We'll be right back. Art Festival came back with its third edition during this very weekend between the 14th and 16th. Umumunu, a concept created for humanity about humanity with a blend of art, is an event filled with performances and various panels of discussion. But first off, let's have a sneak peek. Umumunu Art Festival returned this past week with its third edition during the 14th and 16th of July 2017. Ubumunu is the Kenya Rwanda word for humanity and calls for unity amongst all people of the world, promoting love and inclusion and rejecting hatred and discrimination. 
Obumunu is a one-of-a-kind event created for the sake of humanity that happens once a year, an event inspired by humanity and all aspects surrounding it. This year's edition theme was connecting art and technology in terms of humanity. Obumunu is a festival for all ages with different content for different audiences of all backgrounds. And did I mention that it was free of entrance? So make sure you do not miss the 2018 edition next year. Joining us in the studio today is Hope Azena, the founder of Mashiriki Performing Arts and Media Company, as well as the brain behind the Umumunu Arts Festival. Welcome on set. Thank you. Indeed, I know this is one of the commonly asked questions that you get. Why did you find the initiative and the courage of coming up with the Umumunu Arts Festival? Uh, it's a long haul history because um, for the last 15 years as Mashirika, we've been uh, using a lot of art, using art for social transformation. So it so happens about two, day, two years ago, I was uh, asked to join the Africa Leadership Initiative and for them their motivation or the objective to make you join the Africa Leadership Initiative is to push you from success to significance. Mm -hmm. So they, they said that, okay, you've done shows and people have loved them, but what are you doing to leave that behind? So you have to create a legacy-driven project. So the legacy-driven project I came up with was to create a platform where different artists can come on board and you know tailor humanity in their arts. Mm -hmm. So the amphitheater became our backdrop with its whole history for us to encourage other artists to come mm -hmm. and join us. So that's really what is behind. It's a legacy-driven project. Like if hope steps out tomorrow, how do does this work? you know, exist on its own. So you are being pushed to do more. So actually, yes, I'm being pushed to do more. And that's really the genesis of mm -hmm. the festival. All right. Another question would be, why use art to convey your message? Why not use technology, sports, or any other means? Why specifically art when Umumunu stands for by humanity, for humanity? Mm -hmm. One, because that's what I was created to do, because I've tried fishing and never helped. Mm -hmm. uh, so really art is my tool. Art is a great tool for communication. Art opens up things, art sparks civic dialogues. Mm -hmm. And sports can do it also, technology can do it. But you know, the good thing with art, it embodies anything. You can do a sports-oriented performance. Uh, but the most important thing is like this art should be the key open you up for these kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a very effective tool. Now, two years from now, ever since its first edition in 2015, what could you say has improved or changed during all that time? Uh, what has really changed is, is that um, it has become a global platform now. We, we send out COF applications online and the, the applications we get are overwhelming. You get over 100 applications yet you're looking for about 13 performances. But what has also changed is that we can now really focus and say this is the need, this is where the world needs to go and we tailor that theme in the festival. But one more thing is also the local participation. Mm -hmm. We're impressed by how local groups are beginning to do art and all these drama clubs coming mm -hmm. on board in the festival. Like every evening, every festival is opened by a young people who are doing theater, theater for change. Mm -hmm. And that's really good for us. All right. yeah. Now every year we know that Umuntu always comes with a new theme mm -hmm. ever since its first edition. Mm -hmm. On this third edition, what could you tell us about the theme that was portrayed in 2017? Yeah, so to, to, uh, in 2017 we looked at art meeting technology mm -hmm. in bringing stories of home to life. So you find that like the set uh, the, the, the designers did was more like uh, art intersecting with technology because we're trying to look also for the definition of home. And we're asking ourselves, what is home today? What is home to a young child? What is home to a teenager? What is the definition of home? And then every time we try to, to create and look for answers to this question, the word technology almost came in. And we found that actually technology has worked in our definition of homes. And then we see how do we bring technology in looking for the definition of home. So this year we're really into technology. Mm -hmm. And also the kind of arts that are coming out have a lot of technology uh, tailored in them, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. Now, if I may ask you, apart from performances, that there are also panels of discussion, yeah. which vary uh, depending on the topic, but everything is about the aspect of humanity. Mm. Now, how impactful are those panels of discussion due to what's going on, due to, to the atrocities going on in the world at the moment and the ones that happened over the past? How impactful? Yeah, they're impactful in a way because they bring conversations that we don't usually talk about. Like our main panel discussion this year really focused on people living with disabilities. Because we're looking at how do we bring these people on board? How do we, as a country that is developing very fast, also have these people develop with us? Mm -hmm. So we, this time actually in the lineup performances, we had people living with a disability perform. And it was really very touching. So we're like, as artists, how do we bring these people on board in our creations? Only not only looking at somebody just like physically, complete, mm -hmm. but somebody who has physical uh, issues, how do we bring them on board? How do we make them dance? How do they, we make them sing? How do they make them perform and live as human beings? So we're looking at inclusivity of this aspect of people living with disabilities. That was our focus of panels. You know, indeed, that is a wonderful vision. Mm -hmm. If I may ask you, mm -hmm. after three years, mm -hmm. what do you see yourself in the next 10 years? What do you see Umumunu Arts Festival in the next 10 or five years? So? Well, Okay, in the next five or 10 years, our dream is really kind of coming, you know? Our dream is to make Rwanda a one-stop center for change. Because as a country, we have, we have, we are moving, we are growing very fast, and we have things to share with the world. So sometimes people ask me, where did you learn to do this? I'm like, Rwanda is a school. Every mm -hmm. other day, I learn something new. I learn how to connect with people. I learn how to be part of the development process. So our dream is making Rwanda a one-stop center for change. Mm -hmm. so, and it's happening. It's happening because we have a global platform now. And also, how can we also make this platform be a one platform that puts also Africa on a, on a spotlight of Africa with intelligent minds, Africa that creates art that has brains behind, because we have great literature minds. We have mm -hmm. the Walso Inca, you know, Achebes. So that African festivals are not only seen as rhythms and dance and skins and spears, mm -hmm. but with a festival that has thought-provoking performances that have deep uh, literature aspects in them. Mm -hmm. So people, we need to change, because we have brilliant minds. Mm -hmm. We need to just bring Africa together. Mm -hmm. And for, uh, for a while, Rwanda is the heart of Africa, mm -hmm. so we hope that this pulse of this heart, mm -hmm. we can start from this parking, bringing mm -hmm. Africa together mm -hmm. as a nation that is intelligent mm -hmm. and as a nation where people come mm -hmm. to learn. Indeed. Yeah. Now, one cannot speak about humanity without thinking about the youth. Mm -hmm. And you know, I myself as a, an individual who was really at a young age interested into performing arts, I was always told that art is not really a, a meaningful career that can change one's life. What would you tell to people and parents out there who doubt it and, who are, and to some who are inspired by it? Well, can you imagine a young person who grows from kindergarten to university and they've never sung? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you imagine that? I can feel the yeah, pain. it's yeah. not human. Mm -hmm. It's not human for, for a young person not to be able to play, mm -hmm. for a young person not to be able to sing, for a young person to just be themselves. And I think art really encourages this. So we need to really, our pa parents of these young people need to let them, just encourage them to do art. Our, day, our first day of the festival is dedicated to children and young people because art uh, creates that platform. Art, art unlocks people. Mm -hmm. Art unlocks hidden voices. You will not know people if you don't let them open up and art really does this. They need to be confident, mm -hmm. they need to be able to express themselves because tomorrow they'll be the politicians, they'll be the, the leaders of tomorrow. And imagine a leader who cannot speak. Mm -hmm. But art gives you those skills. All right. Yeah, so, it, yeah. <laughs> now finally, uh, before we let you go, what are you guys preparing for us for 2018? Or maybe is it just a secret? It is a secret, <laughs> it is a secret, but uh, it's going to, we are, we are always challenged mm -hmm. to do bigger and better. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be more beautiful, it's going to be more inspiring, mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, better than what it was this year, because the bar this year is again high now, we, we, it, it, has, it competes <laughs> with itself. So the child will be more grown. Mm -hmm. we, call, we call the woman as a child growing, mm -hmm. that is being looked after by a global village. So we hope that this child will be four years old and more mature and with more wisdom. Well, we thank you, Madam Hope Azeda, on behalf of the Rise and Shine team for this uh, lifestyle segment. We'll be sure I can be sad to see you next year for the next edition.
Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Now, don't forget to love to hear your thoughts and comments on what we're talking about here on Rise and Shine Rwanda. Tweet us at Rise and Shine or W. Like us on Facebook and send us your ideas for programs. Check out our Rise and Shine Rwanda YouTube page where you can catch all the shows and posts that we do. Find us on Instagram, Rise and Shine or W. We'd love to see your pictures. Or check out our Rise and Shine Rwanda website. Well, that's all we have for today, folks. Make sure you send us your feedback and share any ideas on how we could improve the show. You are watching Rise and Shine Rwanda with me, Stefan Ngoagujiri. And me, Fidelis Karango. We'll be back here same time, same place next week. But until then, have a good week. Goodbye.